Hello and welcome back. I'm going to run you through a quick tutorial on an alternative for working with the CSC uh, server. Uh, it's going to combine a VPN virtual private network offered by UNL along with setting up a Samba share uh, and using your terminal to connect to the CSE server so that you don't have to install too much on your own computer. This is an alternative to using the CS50 IDE. Uh, it allows you to use your own computer for most of what you're going to be doing, uh, but still use the CSE server for compiling and running your programs. So the first step is that you're going to need to, if you haven't already, set up a two-factor authentication through the UNL system. Uh, for that, you can go to this uh, the current address here uh, that I'm showing you. Uh, true you, you'll need to claim your identity if you haven't already, and you'll also need to enroll in two-factor authentication, uh, usually through uh, a mobile device, your phone, or something like this. Uh, you're probably already familiar with uh, a, a process like this, but it basically it, allow, it means that for every login, you have two factors. So not only your password, uh, but also it'll send typically a push notification to your phone, and you verify that you are, in fact, uh, logging in. The point of this is that it adds two levels of security to all of your logins. Once you've done that, you are going to need to install a Cisco client for a virtual private network because in order to connect to the CSE server uh, through Samba or SMB, uh, you will need to make it appear as, you're, as if you are on campus. Now, if you're already on campus, uh, then you don't need to use a VPN. But if you're going to be off campus at any point, uh, then you are going to need to use the VPN because it is firewalled, uh, meaning that it will not allow off-campus computers access uh, to the CSE server through SMB. You will need to go here and install a VPN client. Full instructions are also available on this website. I'm gonna walk you through it. You'll need to use your login. And the second password is actually uh, in the instructions. It tells you to either use a push or phone uh, to push to your phone. Otherwise, uh, it's not actually a password. Once you've got your push notification, you'll approve it. And then you can download and install it. It'll, now I'm doing this on my Mac, but it'll probably automatically detect which system you're using. I've already installed it, so I'm not going to go over that. But otherwise, there are additional instructions if you need it. Instead, I'm going to start the client itself. For me, it installed under Cisco, and then the Cisco AnyConnect Secure Mobility Client. You'll connect to vpn.nebraska.edu. And of course, you'll need to provide your password again. Again. Accept. And now you're connected to the VPN. Now, this is routing most or all of your traffic through UNL's network. So to make it look like you're actually on campus, it is secured, it is encrypted. Uh, UNL does see all of your traffic, so uh, you will want to, of course, disconnect from the VPN when you're going to be doing your own personal stuff. And also you'll want to connect from, disconnect from your VPN uh, simply because it does add some overhead. It does uh, uh, increase your network traffic uh, when you don't need to make it appear like you're on campus. At this point, I'm going to connect to my Z drive, uh, which is basically my file share on the CSE server so that I can make it look like a local, ne a local network to drive. Uh, you've got your, uh, you know, your hard disk over here. If you put in a thumbnail drive, it'll show up. For example, I've got a, an external hard drive uh, that shows up as Lacy setup right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the CSE server to make it look like a thumbnail drive that I can uh, access my files, I can drag and drop files back and forth between my local computer, my hard drive, and the CSE server. The way that we're going to do this is through SMB, that's a server message block. Uh, it basically provides a shared network access to the file server or printer, stuff like that. 
Uh, and again, the motivation is that we want to be able to access this remote computer, this remote uh, file system uh, without too much effort. So we want to make it look like it's uh, local by simply connecting to it once and then we can do whatever we want with it. So to do that on a Mac, you can go to the Finder, then Go, Connect to Server, and then S uh, the address is going to be csc-smb1, that's a 1, not an L, uh, .unl.edu slash. You'll replace this with your, your login instead. Of course, I'm going to be connecting using my login. Now, it might prompt you for a password. I've already given my password. Uh, now, this is your CSE password, so it is different than the password that we were using before. Uh, but otherwise, I am now connected. And you can see right here that it looks like an external hard drive. It might take a little bit of prompting, might take a little bit of, uh, uh, of additional time for it to actually retrieve the file system information. Uh, but once it's there, it's there, and all of these files are stored. Uh, your files will look different, of course, uh, but these are all files that are stored on the remote CSE server. So, of course, I can drag and drop them. I can drag uh, local files here uh, to uh, the, uh, uh, the remote file system. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start editing files. For that, we recommend Atom.io. It's a free editor uh, with uh, syntax highlighting and markup. Uh, and it's cross-platform, so you can use this on Windows or Mac. Uh, of course, there are alternatives, Sublime. Uh, just any old text editor will do. Uh, whatever you want to use, I'm going to be using Atom. So I've started up Atom here. So I've simply dragged and dropped that external hard drive onto Atom, and now I can explore the file systems over here. You might experience some delays because of course it is going out to a remote file system and getting information, but eventually it does all work. And I've already got a hello.c file here already with the basic hello world program written in C. Of course, you can create new files if you need to, new file or new folder. That will actually create the file on the remote file system. You can also drag and drop local uh, directories if you want to work with local files in Atom.io. It's just basically a text editor. It's not a full integrated development environment, but it is uh, uh, because it doesn't have a compiler and a, a way to run stuff directly. But of course, there are, there are ways of doing that. And the way that I'm going to show you how to do it, though, on at least a Mac is to use the terminal. Terminal may not show up by default if you've never used it before, but it's located in Utilities, Terminal. And then you can drag it down to your toolbar if you want to. I've already got it set up to do that. And so I've opened up a terminal here. Uh, now this terminal is now this terminal is local. I am on my computer. In fact, if I uh, list where I am, I'm in users CBERC. I'm on my local hard drive right now. What I want to do is I want to connect to the CSE server. So I will SSH into it. SSH just stands for secure shell uh, and providing, uh, and I provide my login at cse.unl.edu. When you do, it'll prompt you for a password. I've got it set up so that I don't have to provide my password. If you want to know how to do that, I can show you later on. Uh, but otherwise I've already logged in here. And if I type ls, I see the exact same files as I see over here. Uh, now, there are a lot more files over here because they're all dot files, which are all hidden files by default. Uh, but otherwise, that uh, hello.c file that we were working with right there, uh, there it is. There it is when I list it through the terminal here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile and run that program now. gcc hello.c. And that compiles into a file called a.out. In fact, over here, you can see it. There it is. Of course, it's just a binary file. So we'll go ahead and run it. And it says, hello world. You can make changes. Recompile over here using the terminal. And those changes are reflected. Now again, all of these files are stored on the remote CSE server. Uh, if you need to, you can go ahead and drag and drop them to copy them. You can drag that to your desktop or your local file system, and then you can do whatever you want with it. Now, this is on my desktop, so it's a local file. It's completely different from this file over here. 
The setup for Windows is going to be extremely similar. Uh, the only difference is that you're going to have to use PuTTY and uh, install and use PuTTY uh, instead of using a built-in terminal. Now I'm going to show you how to do this in Windows. First, you may need to change some settings in order to enable you to connect to a Samba share. Hit your Windows key and R and run GP edit. That'll open up a dialog that looks like this. Click Administrative Templates, double click Network, Landman Workstation, Enable Insecure Guest Logins. Make sure that it's enabled if it's not already, and hit OK. Now open up your PC, and under Computer, Map Network Drive. This will bring up a dialog. Type in the following address. Those are backslashes. And that is a 1. Make sure that C Burke is replaced with your login. Be sure to connect using different credentials. And type in the following. It is case sensitive. Those are all uppercase letters. And again, that is a backslash. Provide your CSE password, and it should be connected. You can drag and drop files if you want, or open it up directly in Atom. To disconnect, go back to the PC, right click, select disconnect. Of course, you'll want to stay connected to both the VPN and the Samba share in order to work with those files. I'm going to show you an alternative to Terminal, which is called PuTTY. It's an external program that you can download and install like you would any normal Windows program. It's free. Once it's installed, you can fire it up by going to your PC and searching for it. Now the host name is going to be cse.unl.edu. And you can save this session as CSE so that you don't have to retype it every single time. You can just click it and hit open or double click it, and it'll make a connection to CSE. It'll prompt you for your login and your password. It won't display the password because that would be a security issue. And now we're connected. You can list the files, you can compile files, and you can run them. Over here, I'm still connected using Atom. I can make changes, save those changes, and those changes are saved to the remote file. I can recompile it and see those changes in action.